Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty, you shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. Ah, do you feel overwhelmed with MAGA lies and misinformation? Do you on a daily basis want to pull out your fucking hair? Well, let me introduce you to Super Grift Gummies. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish there was like a gummy that would fix all this, right? So this morning I'm I'm trying to figure out like what is the what is the fucking main story today? What's the main lie that these fucking maggots, these Cheeto humping fuck nuggets are telling today? Yeah, you know, I, I try to lead in with some of that, right? The the bullshit that they tell to debunk it or expose it, you know, what what whatever the buzzword is that. Uh, a title might contain to get you to click on the the fucking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm in the business of clickbait sometimes. I got to get you to pay attention, right? To some degree, rather it's the the thumbnail that I make uh, to be enticing, or maybe it's the title or the story that I'm 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 leading with. Because this is a two-hour show. This is a two-hour show about all the shit that has happened from the time of the last show. But I, I don't have enough time in two hours to tell you every fucking lie, every nonsensical thing, every misleading piece of information that MAGA and Trump, their campaign, Elon Musk, and all the fucking assholes on the right that do a gish gallop on the internet. It's impossible. Like, literally, it is impossible. And as I'm going through my Twitter feed this morning and the news and trying to figure out what is the what's the fucking what's the fucking main thing? What what do I want to talk about in the first 30 minutes? What's the you know, because I have a to give you guys an idea, I have like a 50,000 foot narrative, right? That's the narrative. That's the message that is driven from this show. It's my belief that it is the message and the narrative that will carry us to a place with this new brand of liberalism to make sure that fascism kind of hides back underneath this fucking rock because it's terrified of the truth. It's kind of the idea, right? And every day I've got to find that story, the story that fits in that narrative that kind of pins all the other stories of the day together. And then I come here and yell and scream into the microphone. But more than anything, I try to, you know, lace those stories together to you to show you how they're all related in one spot. Because they all truly are related to some degree. At least that's the, the idea of messaging and narrative. It's actually sometimes a tactic uh, in debate prep and in debating, you know, actual debating or interviewing. MAGA and Republicans use this all the time. And I just said the words gish gallop. Now, if, if you're not familiar with the gish gallop, I'll be uh, telling you a little bit about it today. Where it kind of comes from, because that's, that's what I did this morning. I was like. Oh, fuck. Well, let me just look up what a gish, what, what, what the fuck is the gish gallop? Where does it come from? And what is that tactic? More importantly, how can we use what we have, what resources we have to counter 
that tactic. And it's used by fascist right a lot. And it was actually a technique, and it's a rhetorical technique, that was named after an American uh, creationist. His name was uh, Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne Gish, G-I-S-H, Dwayne Gish. And it was popularized um, as a debate style in the later half of the 20th century. What the Gish Gallup involves is overwhelming an opponent with a rapid series of arguments, half truths, and misleading statements in a quick succession. It's it's basically what Trump does all the time, right? And and again, the idea is to lie. The idea is to mislead, not to tell the truth. And the tactic relies on the fact that refuting each point takes significantly more time and effort than making them than making them and then leaving the opponent struggling to keep up. Right. So the, the idea is just to lie so much that you can't counter every single lie. If you in one statement tell four lies and your opponent opponent. Maybe it's a debate opponent. Maybe it's the person interviewing you. Maybe it's just the person fucking listening to you. Or it's you scrolling through your fucking social media feed. And again, it's supposed to overwhelm you. And it's supposed to keep you struggling. That you can't keep up with the lie. You can't, and and you certainly can't find the truth. And also what it does is it it gives this sense of an, an appearance of victory through sheer volume, right? Not not like substantive argument. Right? They, they they on Twitter they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck if there's no evidence that that they are manufacturing storms to direct towards mega supporters. Right? They, they, don't, they don't give a fuck if there's no evidence for it. That's up to you to fucking find that out, right? And even if their argument sounds fucking sketchy at best, they don't care. They don't care. And the reason why they don't care is because it, the tactic and the strategy is just to pile you full of lies that you have to try to undermine each lie to prove them wrong. Which is absolutely ridiculous because just just the absurdity of some of their and it's stories. They're stories. They're not real. It's not real. It's not reality, right? They may have crumbs and and little pinpoints of of the f- truth or facts, like um, with this storm Milton, right? Uh, storms move. Storms can't be a- predicted at a hundred percent accuracy. Now, with the technology that we have, we can be pretty goddamn accurate. It can get pretty fucking close. And there's a lot of different technology out there that predicts these storms. Not only predicts them, but tracks them. Radars. They have they have weather planes. There's all sorts of technology, especially in this day and age. To develop the models to protect human lives. In areas like Florida, where this storm battered the state. But when there's movement in the storm, they're like, oh, look at the movement, right? So they refer to the movement of the storm, but then they make up some fucking bullshit story with a thousand lies behind it to tell you why it moved. Oh, they were, they, the Jews. And, and, And again, I know I've been saying this a lot, but folks... This this narrative of it's the other, it's the Jews that is doing this is is foaming to the top. And it's becoming more and more clear that Trump's Project 2025, when I call it Nazi Manifesto. (laughs) 
I'm not far off from where they developed every single one of these nonsensical points to change society. It's, it's overwhelming, actually. And you think it would be easy, right? You think it would be easy to undermine lies, to combat them, to try to counter the gish gallop that is happening to us right out in the open. I've mentioned over the past few days that Elon Musk most certainly is standing Wittingly, it it appears, maybe unwittingly, but I I just don't believe that. He is wittingly knowing that there is massive amounts of misinformation that is being disseminated from his social media website and app, Twitter. He calls it X-Chan. And the overwhelming amount of misinformation isn't, doesn't mean that it's not countered. Community Notes is doing their best. Other people on the, on the social media app are doing their best. But it's not just Twitter. It's all over the internet. They have figured something out. And the Russians and Vladimir Putin taught him this technique on social media. We saw it in 2016. I mean, Trump's always been a fucking liar his entire life. I would imagine that the first words that left that fucking piece of shit's cocksucker was lies. His first words were probably lies. But it's well past Donald Trump speaking lies into a microphone. We are in a later stage of this gish gallop than Donald Trump continually to try to mislead his cult. It is metastasized. And we're, we're only to October 10th. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're less than a month away, but God damn. We still got three weeks of this shit. Fuck me. And as we draw closer to the election in November... My guess is that it's not going to get better. It will get worse. This morning, uh, my Twitter feed keeps throwing me rabbit holes. And as I dive into these rabbit holes, it makes my brain hurt even more. And they're right-wing rabbit holes. Okay, These are QAnon right-wing rabbit holes. And it's not just the post, uh, the tweet, that is a lie. Because what they have discovered, what they were taught by the Russians and bad actors all around the world in this effort to confuse populations, is that the comment section, whoo, baby, oh, man. That's where you really get them. With all the misinformation and the lies. There was a, an interview with the with one of the people who owns the, the investment group of Pornhub. Now, they have a really high stake in this election, which is kind of weird that the porn industry and I, and I played yesterday in the Easter egg uh, a, a segment from Rachel Maddow where she is talking about how <laughs> porn sites are now going to run run political ads. Their industry is in danger because of Trump's Project 2025 and these fucking absolute 
psychopaths that somehow are projecting that porn is making gay people. Now, this has always been a trope, right? And I know it's a zero days talking about porn, uh, but <laughs> we've talked about the storm and how it's uh, when they say they, they mean the Jews. Almost every single point of Trump's Project 2025, the underlying narrative, the undertone, the undercurrent of their messaging is that the Jews control everything. Now, it's a little weird because Donald Trump, you know, recently embraced (laughs) Jews, which is um, kind of pissing. And you want to know the honest truth. A lot of the right wing neo-Nazis have disavowed Trump, walked away from him, supposedly. We'll see. But it doesn't change the narrative. It doesn't change the rhetoric. It doesn't change their hate. Just because Donald Trump may embrace the Jewish vote because he knows he needs it. Just like he knows he needs the evangelical vote. And it seems to be eroding out from underneath him. The American Christian vote, not not Christian nationalist. I want to be very specific here. It appears that Trump and his campaign are worried. They're very worried that the church, the American Christian church in general, is going to abstain from voting in the presidential election. Now, whether that affects the down ballot races or not, we, you know, we don't we we won't know that. Until November 5th. I mean, we can prevent it. We can definitely get out and make sure that we're doing everything we can to pile these mega fascists under mountain ranges of votes. But it's getting very complicated and very hairy. But back to the porn part, I watched uh, a little bit of an interview of one of the investors or something that owns the group that owns Pornhub. Now, Pornhub is is not just Pornhub. It's a pretty big conglomerate. They own a lot of different websites. They own a lot of different uh, content distributions, uh, outlets of porn. And it's all kinds of porn, right? Straight porn, gay porn, trans porn, uh, solo porn. I mean, if you're not familiar with porn, if you can think it up, there's probably fucking porn on the internet, right? I mean, you've heard of feetfinder.com. There's people who have fetishes about almost anything. Some of it illegal. But in this interview on uh, Peanut Butter Podcast, PBD, I think it's called Peanut Butter, Peanut Butter Delicious Podcast. I don't know. I don't know. Why. I think it's his initials. I don't know what though. Anyways, <laughs> fuck him. He's interviewing uh, one of the owners of Pornhub. Now, this person looks like they could possibly be from the Middle East. But the right wing all over the Internet is saying. He's a rabbi. He's not a rabbi, he, and, and he's not Jewish, but they're saying he's Jewish. He's, he's, he's an Arab. <laughs> he's not Jewish. But they don't care about the truth. See? I mean, if they cared about the truth, they wouldn't be saying that they are manipulating storms to kill people, MAGA supporters in Florida or some stupid shit. But it, I've gone down so many rabbit holes, I'm going to tell you, that it's not just the porn they think controls. Because the reason why they believe that Jews control the porn is because Jews are using porn to manipulate you. To make you gay, to make you trans, to you know, to bend your mind into believing things that 
are are anti-white. And they put non-white people in porn too, turning you into homosexuals and and inward lovers. I'm not kidding you. This is their rhetoric. It's been a challenge the last uh, few weeks to figure out how to present this to you. And the reason why is because if you're not on the journey with me down this rabbit hole and I tell you some of these conspiracy theories, you're like, Tony, that sounds fucking nuts. Yes, it is nuts. It's absolutely batshit crazy. And QAnon is a hell of a drug. And QAnon, in its foundation, is anti-Semitic. That's the whole point of QAnon. Is to blame the others. And yesterday, I I tried to put it into some historical context, Uh, even with this uh, Madison Square Garden where Donald Trump is going to be renting Madison Square Garden and holding a Nazi rally there. But there's a lot more than just the historical context. There's also the contemporary context and the context of the election and after the election when he loses. It's just not enough time. But almost everything, all of these points that are either in Trump's Project 2025 or we keep hearing them say on social media or even into a microphone, right? A lot of like the good liars and Adam Mockler and and Walter Masterson. They go and they kind of interview these people, right? They put the microphone in their face. Now, there's several others out there. Those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. And sometimes they do a decent job of trying to make us see how these people think or what their belief system is and why they are supporting such blatant lies. And sometimes it's a horrible job. There's just nothing they can do. (laughs) I mean, the outcome of the content is only what the person standing in front of them answering the questions will say. But it's not good enough. I want to tell you that is that that exposing them and mocking them is good. But America is growing tired. And most people are growing tired of us having to come to the reality that there are a lot of people in this country, not a large percentage, you know, maybe 12, 13%, but a lot of people. That's a big number. Small percentage, large group of people that have absolutely been brainwashed. And a hell of a job has been done to wash their brains. And to reprogram them into hating. Hate. Like just cold-blooded hate. And when you when you hold that kind of hate, right? When that when that kind of hate is internalized inside of you, and gasoline is poured. On that erupting fire of bigotry, of lies, of hate. Mm. It really does start to ooze out into our society. Even if those people have no idea where that hate came from. No clue. I I almost guarantee you uh, nine out of 10 people that would say they don't like that there's Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. Couldn't exactly pinpoint why they hate that. I know it feels like they'd be like, no, no, no. You'd be able to pen them up for racism. 
I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> At this point, human beings are really easy to convince of almost anything. A whole generation of people in this country who are using the internet are being duped. They're gullible as fuck. It's on the internet. Must be true. Do your own research, right? We saw that in that 60 Minutes interview. With the uh, the Republican co-chairwoman, Bush, who has the super PAC in Arizona, who keeps lying and lying and lying and lying about the 2020 election. And you think they're going to not lie about the 2024 election? <laughs> Come on. Give me a break. But the Gish Gallup is real. And it's the fatigue that our country is feeling. The fatigue of of bullshit. And it's not going away after the election. I wish I had better news than that. I pointed out yesterday in several different instances that uh, freedom of speech is being used as a shield uh, to protect people from sedition. It's happening all over the place. Everywhere in our discourse. I mean, there's U.S. Congress people who are spreading lies about the very government that they rep- that they are part of, that they are elected to represent their constituents. Now, I don't know if Marjorie Taylor Greene has ever received any briefings from Noah. I don't know. I would say that Noah probably would not expend the energy to give someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene a briefing. Maybe they should. And maybe the congresswoman should ask for that briefing. But why would she? What what would come of that? Besides now, she is no longer able to claim plausible deniability. If she really was briefed on the truth, then it would really be seditious. Not only the sedition that she is actively participating in. Because again, these areas that are affected by these storms are protected by the office of the President of the United States, by law. Which if their goal is to tear down the federal government by lying to those people and damaging them in these protected areas where there has been a declaration of natural disaster from our government, not not from Joe Biden. He's the off. He's the office holder, but from our government, our government, not the our. We elected these people. It is us who is in control of the government. Ultimately. But if we continue this gish gallop of lies, if we continue this this sedition in the form of misinformation to get people to be not just anti-government, but to be an insurgency, that's definitely sedition. I don't even know that it doesn't Borderline upon the uh, the old big T treason. I have no idea. I don't know. But we'll go through some of this when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Right back right after this. 